Hi, I'm Steve from the Oasis site. I'm sure many of you will be aware of the greatest of all time debates that exist in football. It's, is it Messi or Ronaldo in tennis? It could be, is it Navratilova or Williams? Well, as we go through Acts, there could be a similar debate about Paul and Peter, who's the greatest of all time as a leader. We know that sometimes existed somewhat in, uh, in the New Testament, in the early church. And certainly that might be fueled by the second half of Acts 9, which is uh, what we're looking at today in our Bible readings. Paul is preaching powerfully in Damascus and Peter is healing the sick and raising the dead in Lydda and Joppa. Uh, which are, are towns that are roughly about 30 miles away from Jerusalem. However, any debate about which is the greatest is irrelevant for all kinds of reasons. And, and here are just two of them. Uh, firstly, Acts uh, as a book introduces us to a wide range of hitherto unknown people who are heroes and heroines in the early church. In other parts of uh, chapter eight and nine that we've been in recently, we, we heard about Philip and Ananias. And today we meet Dorcas, clearly renowned for her acts of mercy. But we also meet Barnabas, who stepped in to help Paul in a tricky moment. Uh, we're reminded in these verses, again, that the early church was wonderful and exciting, but it was far from being totally perfect. Uh, Paul was visiting Jerusalem and the believers there were giving him the cold shoulder or if you like the left boot of fellowship rather than the right hand of fellowship. They must have heard of Paul having come to Christ because uh, by now um, this was three years in, in the past but there is clearly still fear, suspicion and doubt until Barnabas steps in and builds a bridge that enables Paul to use his gifts to good effect in Jerusalem. So we see the church isn't one or two superstars, but a team made up of many with all kinds of gifts that help the mission of the church to surge forward to the ends of the earth. And there's relevance to us too, because as a believer, uh, whoever you are, whatever your past, you have a massive part to play in this team. Now, talking of the past, the second reason the greatest of all time debate is irrelevant when it comes to Peter and Paul is that although God chooses to use us for his glory, ultimately, it's all down to him and not to us. Remember, Paul was a persecutor of believers and he even describes himself as the chief of sinners. And Peter is the one who denied Jesus three times, but God mercifully didn't write them off and he doesn't write us off either, even though we fail in many ways. Now in verse 31 of the verses we're looking at today, we see the reason for the church's success in this season. And there's no mention of Peter or Paul. It says this in verse 31, so the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. The church advances when there is a healthy, awe-filled fear of the Lord, an awareness of how great God is rather than how great Peter, Paul, or any other leader is. The church also advanced due to the activity of the Holy Spirit and, and not the best efforts of men and women. And interestingly, in these verses, the, the church multiplied through these factors during a period of peace. There was a period of calm after some quite significant storms. You know, oftentimes the church grows and, and we grow personally during the storms. 
God often grows us and develops our character in those seasons when we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. But God in his grace grants respite from storms. And strangely enough, we can perhaps be most prone to lose our way in those moments. And, and we, can, we can lose our edge in times of relative ease. That was certainly true of the nation of Israel time and time again. When there was peace, they went astray. And that can be true for us too. And we're beginning to emerge from the pandemic storm. And we will perhaps enter a season of relative peace. Let's not lose our way or just coast along and get our eyes off Jesus. When we do, we become self-absorbed and dependent. We need as much as ever to, to keep our eyes on Jesus, to remain in the fear of the Lord and know the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. Let's do that today and every day and trust that as we do, God will multiply us for his glory and not our own. God bless you. Have a great day.